Today I'm going to take a look at this video encoder from VBrick. Looks like it's a pretty standard unit because I've seen a whole bunch of different models of this and I think they're designed to do two by two on a rack. It's a little taller than one U so it looks more like a one and a half U so maybe they're designed for a two U operation or maybe even three with four of them. It's got a fan input on the front, a little LCD and an infrared window. This particular unit seems to be damaged. When it starts up it just complains that there's uh, encoder failures and other issues does provide an IP address which I can't access so it doesn't seem to be working properly at all. Round back you can get an idea of what this thing actually does which is it takes composite video or S video with audio in two channels and then outputs a video stream via Ethernet. Basically just a hardware encoder and it's a fairly old unit. I think it's 2009 so it's pretty heavy. There's a lot of hardware in here to do the encoding. I think it just produces an MPEG stream. That's about it. It's just video inputs and an Ethernet jack. On the inside of it you can see that there's quite a bit of hardware being used to do this. Everything from PLX chips which are probably uh, just using uh, PCI Express or PCI to link up all the devices, Xilinx FPGAs, Texas Instruments digital media processors, which are probably just a standard CPU core with a DSP, and then a whole mainboard underneath it. So you need all this hardware just for one composite in to digital. On the lower level, tons of flash. There's a big Freescale processor, more PLX chips, some kind of Intel custom controller or something. Take a look at that in a second. Yeah, tons and tons of hardware just to do what essentially you could do with a like a mobile phone, <laughs> mobile phone chipset these days with a little attachment for the analog input. A lot of these chips are actually dated 2006, older than I thought. The front panel consists of a standard 16 by two LCD, Delta made DC brushless 50 millimeter fan, Thin one at that, and just a little bit of metal to hold it all together. All right, on the main PCB, there's main power coming in with really fancy OSCOM solid capacitors, and there's some high-speed connections. These connect up to the daughter boards. So it's just general power supply stuff, buzzer, Xilinx, CPLD or FPGA. There's a couple relays here. I'm not really sure what these are being used for. Maybe some kind of power saving mode and DC in with some filtering. So it's all running up here through these big traces, I presume. Whole bunch of diodes and stuff for protection and more filtering. Magnetics for the ethernet and a whole bunch of flash. And then this is a PowerPC 603E based CPU, uh, well it's a SOC from Freescale, has all sorts of stuff including a PCI interface which is what the uh, PLX chips are interfacing to, Intel Ethernet controller. The PowerPC 603E was a pretty well used chip, it was in a whole bunch of Macs. This Intel chip I couldn't find any real information on, it's most likely interfacing with the PCI bus but I'm not really sure. Two of these Plex chips which are in fact uh, PCI interfaces, they're connecting up up to these in some way. There's a provision for what looks like another one, but I'm not positive. In the back, it's all bypassing, but there are some more of these high-speed connectors, so I s assume there's another model where you can stack boards underneath it, because these boards don't actually match up with these. They're horizontal connectors, but you can see the ones on the top almost match up. Not sure. Must be another model. Little side note. If you ever see connectors that have little bits of Kapton tape on them or other types of plastic like this, this is because they're surface mount and so the little pick and place machine can pick up the individual parts. It needs a nice smooth surface to get the uh, vacuum part picker to grab onto it. As for the digitizer boards, it's just got all the inputs, a whole bunch of analog stuff, switching and filtering. This is a Philips analog interface chip. It also does scaling. It's a decoder for NTSC and PAL and SCART. Xilinx Spartan. And that's linked up to the TI digital signal processor. This is a specific one designed for video applications as well as audio. And another Plex chip and some memory. The TI chip is a TMS320 DMG42GDK. They're sending the analog signal into here. This 
processing it along with the FPGA zoom and then it's being sent through the PLX bridge to the main SOC and then to the Ethernet port once it's been encoded again. I assume there's some encoding hardware on the Freescale CPU. I think that's how they're doing the uh, actual final encoding as opposed to the digitizing. Since this one was broken, I can't actually use it for anything. Not that I was really planning to. I mean, these things are pretty niche. It's still pretty nice seeing such a high-end piece of hardware with just very few expenses spared on components. Just quality stuff all around. When I got it originally, I was hoping to do some fun video tests and like joke around and maybe like record something on it. Unfortunately, uh, yeah, no good. No worky. 